Um, so welcome to From Zero to Hero. Um, we have got a presentation here this morning for you, um, taking you through using our complete suite of DXP tools um, on the newly released SXC. Um, and uh, we'll show you how we can put together a website uh, and using all of our tools rapidly. So yeah, the summit in 60 minutes, um, we are going to, um, we've already developed a lot of the content and the solution architecture. Um, we've pr provisioned a lot of the platform uh, and that includes some of the template systems that we're using. Um, and we're currently in the process of developing out uh, all of the different components and hooking that all up together. So working on this this morning, uh, we have the five team members here, um, myself, Andrew, um, I'll be uh, taking us through the entire SXC and how everything's joined together. Um, we've got uh, Ricky in New Zealand, uh, who's going to be using Squiz Connect, uh, our iPass tool. Um, Tim uh, in uh, New York is uh, going to be taking us through Matrix 6. Um, James uh, in uh, the UK is going to be showing us data store uh, and Davila here in Australia uh, is going to be taking us through the funnel back component. So without further ado, um, we'll just jump straight into the build um, with these guys and let's see who we've got first. Um, Tim, are you ready to take us through your component? Yeah, I'm ready, of course. If you wanna just screen share out so we can get that. Absolutely. Yeah, you might have to stop sharing your screen first, sorry. Sure. All right. Let me just stop share. Thank you. All right. Uh, yeah, so as Andrew mentioned earlier, then, you know, the goal of today's session is that we're going to be building out a campaign page. Uh, so luckily enough, uh, in terms of the pre-work that has been done, you know, we've been given an actual sort of layout slash mock-up design of the content that we're looking to build. So this has been provided us to provided to us from the marketing team. So at least we have an idea of like, you know, visually what the content's going to look like. Uh, we've also got, you know, a whole bunch of pre-written copy here as well. Uh, so this is ready for us to copy and paste from. So we're just making the content generation uh, job that much easier. So we'll be, you know, behind the scenes, I'll be using sort of these two documents as a reference when I'm building out this campaign page. Um, where the work is uh, going to be done uh, is inside Squiz Matrix. So here is our Squiz Experience Cloud Console. Here's where you go to access all of our DSP products. Uh, clicking through here, it takes me through to Matrix. Uh, so here we're looking at Matrix 6. Uh, here is our blank page. And so, you know, today I'll be working on this blank page and essentially building it out so it looks like you know, this campaign, campaign page that we've been sent through here. Uh, some other bits of pre-work that we've done is that we have downloaded a site template from the Squiz Marketplace, uh, which is great. You know, the Squiz Marketplace provides a whole bunch of different site templates that can quickly be downloaded. Uh, it, they take care of all the background design assets for you, so all this configuration stuff here. Uh, so you and your team can focus on just you know, building the content that you know, the end user and the audience sees. Um, yeah, so that, that's the introduction for me, Andrew. Cool. Yeah, that um, helps to standardize the, uh, help to standardize the actual site structure across all the different sites that you're building within the matrix instance as well. So it's a great option. Um, all right, so let's next jump over to Davila. Have you got uh, something to show us with Funnelback? Yeah, Andrew, I do. So I'll be working on the search component uh, for the campaign site. So let me just share my screen to show you what we have so far. All right. And all right. Can you see my screen now? Perfect. Yeah, so what we've got here is just our starting search template um, that we've spun up using the styles that we prepared for in advance. Um, we've already started indexing um, Squiz's content across its, um, across its Squiz's public digital surface. So 
we've got the content index into Funnelback. Um, we've applied it to our search package over here. And what we need to do today is make this a bit more, um, a bit more of an um, exciting experience for our users when they come through and they're looking for more content about Squids um, when they're going to our registration site. So what we'll do today is we'll set up some filters to help our visitors narrow their search. And I'll put that on our left side here. Um, what else will I do? I'll also set up um, some tags for our blogs so we can talk about, uh, know which products are each blog is talking about. And we also have our default icon set up for our results. So we actually want to display different icons for the different content types that we have indexed. So I'll be setting up those three types. And also um, we're gonna create a curated promotion above the search results so that every time someone searches, for anything across our um, search, we'll have a promoted uh, tool, a promoted rule across on the top to get everyone to register for Summit. And that's it for me for right now. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. It'll be fun. Yeah. All right. Who's up next? We've got um, Ricky. You Have you got something to show us? Yep, yeah. got it. Okay, cool. So, uh, yep, so today I'll be building a uh, connection uh, from Matrix to Salesforce. Uh, and uh, to do that, I'll be building a Matrix form uh, and then connecting that to Salesforce via our new integration platform, Skills Connect, um, so we can create and maintain new leads uh, in Salesforce. So once the form is done, I'll send it to Tim and he'll embed it at the bottom of the page. Um, what we're looking at here currently is uh, Skills Connect. Um, and I've just started creating the um, flow. So we've got a webhook here. So we'll receive data and uh, from our matrix form and then we'll eventually send it off to uh, Salesforce to create those new, those new leads. Um, we've set up some things beforehand. So we've created the authentication keys to Salesforce before this um, demo, um, but that's about it. We'll build the form and the integration um, during the 60 minutes. That's me. Cool. Awesome. You're on the clock. Get building. Yeah. Um, James, have you got uh, have you got anything to show us this morning? You're uh, looking at Data Store. Yeah. Hey, Andrew and you guys. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to seeing how these components come together for our demo, and then you know how our Squeeze DXP, DXP products come together. Um, so my aim for today is to create a simple data visualization um, using the uh, industry uh, field from our summit registrations. Um, so when I was uh, first thinking about how to go about doing this, I was thinking, okay, but, you know, so if I was to use uh, Matrix and or Salesforce, um, which you know, perfectly doable in either of those, um, but you know, I'd probably have to go about it by setting up. Um, you know, custom metadata fields or uh, data records, uh, maybe like creating an asset listing and then changing the format of this asset listing into something readable by the uh, data list chart um, or indeed with the uh, Salesforce, you know, there'd be some fairly uh, complex integration code having to be written. Um, so, you know, upfront, that's quite a bit of work. And, you know, as we know, you know, during any kind of registration period, if the scope was able to change, because you know that never bloody happens. Um, uh, yeah, so all those steps would have to be written again. Um, so yeah, if you just, uh, I'm just going to quickly share my screen. Let's go for that one. Share. So how I'm going to go about it is that I'm going to use the um, data store uh, uh, tutorials and also the um, reference guides in here. Um, yeah, and so with the reference guides, uh, so bear with me, I'm just gonna use, uh, let's come into data store here and reference the, guides. We're looking at that SXC uh, platform. That was, that's the new screen that'll allow us access to all of the different tools within the- Oh uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, yes, yeah. so from in here, yeah. So that's, it that was just because we whipped past it. So yeah, that, that's the SXC platform. Um, so everybody gets, everyone um, will have their access to the SXC, we'll have access to that matrix um, 
Matrix Success platform and all of the, the SaaS tools within there. And that's yep. how we're going to jump into Data Store next. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And literally, that. So what I've done is I've jumped in from uh, Data Store into here. Um, and I'm going to use the uh, reference guides and also the uh, online tutorials, both of which are available through um, the Squiz website. Um, so using the uh, reference guides here, I'm going to use the uh, data store uh, CLI and the SDK. Uh, I'm going to set up a local development environment, um, uh, use the tutorials for a simple submission form, uh, publish through data, and then kind of grab that data and create out a um, uh, data visualization. Uh, for the visualization itself, I'm probably going to go and you know, use a, a uh, lightweight library uh, called Ch uh, Charts CS and inside here, just go and use the donut chart. Um, and then uh, from there, I'm going to create a sim really simple blueprint uh, again through all of the uh, reference guides. Um, so, you know, low code, um, low code example showing what's possible, really quick and out the, out the box. Um, upload that onto a production environment. Uh, jump across into the matrix form that Ricky's already created, uh, update that with a simple select field, mapping that across to the, um, the industry field that's already uh, configured in Salesforce. Um, and uh, then from there, um, you know, create, create a simple page in uh, matrix and then uh, use that as nested content inside the homepage that uh, Tim has created. So yeah, that's me and I'll catch up with you in a bit. Oh cool, man, sounds like you're going to be busy. Yeah, probably pretty busy. Yeah, <laughs> and probably pestering as well. So yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so right. I'm going to stop sharing. All right. Who else is Who else is ready for a chat? Anybody uh, got anything built up yet? Tim, how's How's Matrix? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, if you want to just say it, it's my turn, Andrew. Like, let's Let's not beat around the bush, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyways, yeah, let me share my screen. Oh, yeah, so as you can see, you know, we've had a couple of introductions from the rest of the team. I've been busy building out some content. Uh, so here's what that blank page that we saw earlier now looks like. You can see that we've got a couple of components of content here. Uh, and this was, you know, all in the space of the previous you know, 10 minutes or so as everyone's been talking. Uh, so hopping over to the content editing view inside Matrix, you can see that we've got a couple of components on the page now. We've nested in some content, got some examples of multi-column content, uh, but we're still missing our banner on top. So I'm actually going to go ahead and add that hero image banner now uh, to the screen. Cool. So you notice that when we go to add a content component, we have this nice, you know, add a component panel that lets us choose, you know, the available components that we have on the site. Uh, I can also quickly search for one as well. So if I type properly, I know that I want to add a hero image. Uh, you notice that I can also hover over here to get help text when I'm you know, selecting the components that I want to add to this page as well. So let's go ahead and add our hero image to this page. This is like, this is probably the first time some people have seen the Matrix 6 interface. So um, I, a few changes. Yeah, absolutely a few changes, you know. Um, you know so we've got some nice blue branding up, nice blue branding up top as well. Uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of, you know, changes under the hood. Uh, it's definitely made Matrix 6 a really, really good product. Um, great, so we've added our MT hero image here. Again, you know, thankfully we've got, you know, the content that we can refer to back here. So we've already got our banner text ready for us. Uh, so we know that we want to use this Squeeze Summit 2020 JPEG, and this is also our copy text as well. So going back to our content, uh, I can go ahead and paste that text there. See how it's retained, you know, uh, some of the formatting that's come across with it, which is nice. Um, using our content panel here. Let's go ahead and select our background image. We've pre-uploaded pre a couple of banners. So here's our Squiz Summit 2020. Uh, I think we also want to update to uh, register more. And from here, we can also go ahead and select a nice icon. So let's go with people icon and save that. Yeah, we get to see those see those live previews makes a difference between flicking between screens. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, we really want to push uh, just to improving the content editing experience inside Matrix, um, and just giving our giving our content editors real time feedback. You know, mm. uh, I think that's really helpful for anyone. So 
For example, I can go ahead and adjust the button styling. So now we've got a light button design there. We've got a whole bunch of spacing options as well. So let's go ahead and increase the spacing on the top and the bottom. So we've got just more of that image pushing through there as well. Well, you notice that I've also hidden the asset map. So we've got a full screen view of the content now, which just makes for like much, much nicer continuity experience. Uh, so note that's our H1 tag. Let's go ahead and up this text here. Uh, let's link that text and let's just bump it up to H2 as well. There we go. Right, so that's our banner. We can go ahead and hop on over to the other tab. We've got the preview happening and see what it looks like. Right, so there's our banner up top. Cool. Very nice. So, yeah. And before, before I pass it over, we've also got this little multi-column content section down here. Again, with more real-time content feedback, you know, users can edit you know, the columns of content directly in line. Uh, and so I think for this one here, we're up to the final columns. Let's go ahead. Again, we can copy and paste in this text and you know, matrix will be kind enough to remember any formatting that we've got. We also had some icons that we had to adjust. Uh, note that with the, with the asset map sort of hidden away, we've got this nice you know, full screen view when we're editing our content. Just wanna update the icons here. So we had a people, a book, and a light bulb. So let's go here, let's do our icon again. Add a light bulb here. Great. And last one was a book. Cool. Yeah, you know, we've got our real time updates of our icons here for this multi column content. Nice. Yeah, so I'll be, I'll be busy here working through the rest of the content, uh, but it's coming along quite nicely and quite cool. smoothly. So, yeah, yeah. Looks, yeah. It looks like it's progressed. Hey, I can't. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right, mate, Excellent. we'll check, check back with you shortly. Okay. All righty. Who am I gonna jump on next? Um, I've got something that I can show that I'm ready oh, okay. to show. Yep, fantastic. So we're about my sharing. The screen sharing going on. Yep. Um, so what we're looking at here is the funnel back dashboard and we're looking at one of our search packages for Summit. So what I was just doing before was setting up my template, um, search template, so that we can display the facets and tags once I've got them configured. Um, so I'm just actually just going to publish that before I go on so that when I get our changes ready, um, they're ready to view. Okay, so what we'll start now with is going into our data source for Squiz. We'll click on this and we'll configure the metadata mapping so we can grab some of that metadata and make sure Funnelback is using it correctly. So what I've started to look at was just one of our recent blogs. Um, I know our blogs have a lot of good metadata in there and I want to make sure I capture uh, the category as well as the blog topics. So I just grabbed, oops, sorry, category. So we've got this learn category right here, which is a perfect metadata field for me to use, um, which is the content blog, which I believe it has it for a couple other of our um, different content types as well. So we'll grab that and we'll create a quick metadata field over here using our metadata mapping screen. So we'll call this category in funnel back and we'll add a new mapping over here. So if I just search for that, perfect. So funnel back has already detected this uh, metadata field is available in our index in many appearances, which is great. Let me just, and I'll save that. And one more that we're going to add will be our, doo -doo -doo, let's save this. And then we'll just add blog topics as well, which should be easy to find based on this other page that I found, which was, I think it was called product, which should give us some more information. Okay. And we'll call this, just call it squiz blog topics. And 
Uh, I'll just paste it here and to find it. There you go. Many appearances. Perfect. Save that. And just minimize the finger. Got that. All right, cool. So now funnel back lets me know that since the last index, we've got some updated metadata mapping. So I'll run a quick re-index. I won't run a whole update um, because that would take a while, but we have our advanced update options, which can run the re-index of our live view so that you can have your metadata mappings appearing right away. And that should just take a few moment, moments, but while that is happening, I'll go and configure the passage navigation so we can have those filters on the side when the metadata is ready. So customize passage navigation. I've done this by going into our data source um, and, ask, um, and looking at the search package and assets, uh, accessing the asset list. So we don't have any facets yet and I'll add a new one. We'll do this to filter on a single category. We have quite a few different options here that we can create the facets by, but we'll just start with the simple one for now. And I'm going to title this resources and we called, um, our category field is what kind of gives us those resource fields as well. And that looks good. So it should give me the option. It kind of shows you what it might look like on the side with our different categories over here. Um, but we'll look at it on our search page once it's configured. And I can test and preview. And now funnel back also shows you what this might look like using just a basic, basic search page. This is what our search page looks like, but this gives us a good idea of how many um, documents we might have for each field. That looks good. Yeah. So I'll just publish that and check back on our data source, see if it's finished re-indexing. I think it should be. Let's see. Update complete. Perfect. All right. So if I go back to our search page that I had showed you earlier, mm -hmm. just want to refresh this. All right, nice, all right, cool. Our filters appear right here. That looks pretty good. I should click on one and it should filter by blog because I've set up some of some, uh, the applied passages on the top. Cool, so what I'll do next is just grab the um, correct uh, template for the coding for our free marker template to display the rest of the icons over here. So I'll go and do that and I'll let you know when that's finished. Uh, that look pretty cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so who else is going along? Um, Ricky, have you got, how, how are your flows? Yep, looking good. Uh, share my screen. Right, so uh, in that time, I've managed to create a form and then style it. So here's our form here. Um, and I've started to um, create the integration between matrix form and connect. <clears throat> so now that we've got our form here, uh, we just need to create a rest submission action uh, in the matrix form. So to do that, uh, we can go here, right click on form contents and go submission actions. We've already started to create our rest resource. So if we open this up, uh, we're just sending a post request after the form is submitted um, with this JSON body. Mm -hmm. uh, and these request headers. Um, and if we go to Schools Connect, uh, we have a webhook test URL here. So if I copy this, put that here, that will give us some test data that we can use throughout the flow. Like that. And now if we submit the form, this. We should see our test data come through uh, in Squiz Connect. Yep, here we go. So it's automatically gotten that test data straight away um, with our details here. That's so we can use that throughout uh, the rest of the connection. So if we go connect, uh, continue, finish step. We can create the Salesforce component of our connection. We'll click create object for this case. And here's our saved credential that we created earlier. So we've got one set of credentials for any of the Salesforce connections we want to do. That's correct, yeah. And we can use it throughout any um, any flow we want to create later on. Yeah, nice. uh, all right, so we've selected our authentication credentials. 
we'll just uh, tell the Salesforce connector what kind of object we want to create. In this case, it would be a lead. Yeah, so this is, and this is gathering now all of the, the different live components straight from this our Salesforce instance, I believe. That's correct, yeah. All right, so now it's returned all the fields from a Salesforce lead object that we can map um, our form contents to. So uh, last name is required property uh, and we'll select the uh, last name field from our test data from the webhook uh, to use uh, to map to the uh, Salesforce create object, create lead object. So we'll set last name and we can see it's mapped to Bosch. Set first name. Uh, and we'll set the company. And that's all we'll do for now. Go continue. We can use that test data we've got from the first step to send a sample request to Salesforce. And it will try and create a new lead given the sample data that we've submitted to the webhook in Salesforce. And then it will return a, either a success or fail message depending on if it's got the required Field, so we'll try that now. Hey. Okay, cool. It's a successful message. So we've got our new Salesforce ID. And if we go to Salesforce now, cool, we can see that my new Salesforce lead has been created. Nice and easy. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, we can use this for generating leads, cases, or any other other modules within Salesforce, I guess. Yeah, that's correct. And later on, we'll update that integration um, to include the data store component that James is building. All right, cool. And that form will go somewhere on, the, on that page of ours? Yep, and we'll embed it onto the page that Tim's creating. Good old Tim, building away. All right, <laughs> so... Uh, if that's all you've got for the moment, um, James, you got anything to show us, mate? Yeah, it's been a bit frantic, but hang on, let me just quickly share. Uh, share screen, go for that one, share. So, yeah, what have we been up to? Um, so, what I've done, as I said, from the reference guide and the tutorials, um, I've just used uh, NPM to install the uh, DXP CLI tools. Uh, and then also the um, data store plugins as well. Uh, from there, what I've done is I've actually created, so from these instructions here, I've just made a quick uh, directory for uh, some application and then also the industry, uh, re uh, industry registration uh, folder. I've grabbed the uh, first set of files for the tutorial um, and then I've also initialized my local blueprint. So. Off of here, I've now got a, a dockerized uh, local development environment running. Um, and if I jump into uh, code, what you'll see, I'll just really quickly walk you through the project. Um, so I've got setting JS here. Um, so I've got a, a service URL, um, and this is uh, just the uh, URL for the uh, local development environment, uh, environment sorry. Um, inside my API folder, um, what I've got is I've got my uh, API YAML file. Um, now, this is uh, purely from reference guides. I've not kind of written out all of this uh, in the you know couple of minutes that you've been away. Um, but in essence, what it's doing is setting my paths. Um, so I've got events in here, and I've got my get and post methods. Um, I've then got uh, an events and event ID path again with parameters and also a uh, get. Uh, method in here. Um, so inside my schemas, um, which uh, yeah are in here, so I've got an events uh, schema. So I'm setting out the schema and defining it as a schema. Uh, the type of this schema is array, and then my items. These are actually going to be populated by event JSON. So inside my schemas folder, I have an event JSON, um, and again specifying that it is a schema. Uh, this time round, it's going to be an object. Uh, and inside my object, I have the properties of name, description, and industry. So name and description have come from the reference guides. Um, the one that I've added, and for our uh, scenario and demo, is just an industry. 
you know, description here, what type it is, and then an example of technology. Um, coming through to my main JS again, so you know, low code example. I'm taking stuff from uh, reference guides. Uh, all I'm doing is simply uh, initializing a get events. Uh, method here uh, and a uh, get event again is just looking at uh, something straight out of data store so I'm going to say data store collection events uh, and then go and get the events I'm just doing a super simple um, null check um, and then so if there are actually events what I'm doing so this is the part of uh, code that I've probably written in this time is that so all I'm doing is then changing the events uh, into a variable called results uh, I'm just looping through the events, finding duplicates, and then counting out the duplicates in here. Um, and then from the uh, charts library that I was talking about earlier, um, all I'm doing here is getting an ID called my chart, um, and then I'm using exactly the, uh, the examples from uh, that library. Uh, the only thing I've actually changed in here, so from my um, object of results, I'm just getting the values, and that's gonna be the data that comes through. Um, and then also from my labels, again, what I'm doing from my results variable up here is I'm just getting the keys. And then I've just hard-coded some uh, color values in here. Um, so if I have a look at the index file, um, so again, reference guides and tutorials, like this kind of scaffolded out for you. Um, gives me you know, HTML scaffolding for navigation, uh, where my container and everything's gonna be printed out. Um, for my local environment, what's gonna happen is I'm just gonna use a modal window. Um, it's gonna give me a quick title for register. Here's my modal body here. So I've got an input field for name. I've got a, a select field for industry. And then I've mapped out some sample uh, options in here, again, to map through to the Salesforce industry field. Um, and then underneath, I've just got a, a text area for the event description and then some submit buttons. Um, so that's it, you know, really quick, um, really easy to follow tutorials. Um, actually, if I jump back into here, let's have a quick look. So um, I've pre-populated some uh, dummy data as well. Um, you're gonna have to excuse the null um, in my kind of haste. I've forgotten on these two here to actually populate an industry uh, field, and so that's what we've got now here, but you'll see the others building up. So as I was saying in the um, uh, local environment, what I'm gonna do is just use the modal, so I'm just gonna say uh, another test. Ooh, let's try and spell. <laughs> yeah, and then let's say the industry is gonna be uh, finance and some description event so again using the reference and the tutorials what you'll see is that actually that my uh, registration has come through here and then my finances in here what I've not been able to do because you guys all work too fast is um, actually upload the uh, or update the uh, the JS hook in here what would be really nice is that actually I can reinitialize um, the pie chart um, but actually in the matrix uh, form, it's going to be post back anyway, so the page will refresh, so you'll see that updating. Um, but if I simulate that out, and then I get this extra finance field in here. Nice. Uh, and then one for good measure, so James, another test. Love test data. Yeah, I know. Yeah, fat fingers all the way. It's a test of uh, typing. Let's go for finance again and then say another summary this time and then create and then so we'll come through we see that uploading so data store real time uh, in the js that comes out of the box it's great works this way but in our test what i'm hoping to see is that i have one of finance i reload my page and now i have two of finance so really quick really easy to use code and you know uh, great uh, updates and visualization. Yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, so what, have, what else have we been up to? So uh, if I jump back into here and have a look at this, so this is uh, the production uh, sales production uh, data store. Yeah. Um, what I've actually done is gone through and so if I have a look from here, I've logged into data store. 
Um, and then I've named my blueprint to be uh, Summit Ridge, and then I've uploaded it to Production Data Store. Um, I've not done this on screen with you because there is a, uh, a spinning clock, and it and probably takes about you know three to five minutes. Uh, but yeah, you don't need to see that. Um, but what's happened? So my blueprint here is registered. Um, my URL is now here, so I can share this with Ricky, um, and we can then do the next part. So yeah, my next part is to jump into the uh, form that uh, Ricky created. Um, and then update a simple select field and then jump into connect and then add in a, uh, an extra uh, rest trigger and then join them all together. So we've done some data store bits and now it's called for integrating all of the products together and seeing it work, which would be good. So yeah, I'll stop waffling and uh, let someone else talk. You got some real, real development going on. That's cool. Well, yeah, yeah, it's good to see. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we're going to have to um, we're going to have to hear somebody else chat about their systems. Um, Davila, are you how are you going with your funnel back? Yeah. yeah, I'm going good. I've got a little bit to show you. Cool. All right. So what I was just working on was just um, grabbing some of those tag icons so that I can display them. Um, these are just uh, the tags from, I'll have to show you an example of what these look like on our Squid website. Uh, um, just these little nice looking tags for events or blogs or, um, or default ones. So I was just configuring them um, in our search, uh, search package configuration so that I can access them in our template, which I've already done. So results, tags, default, event, or blog. So that's already set up in our template. The final part I need to do is just um, display them, make sure that the metadata is displaying. So I'll just do that. And because at the moment, we still just have our default one, but Funnelback just needs to know what the metadata field is that should be displayed on each results page. So I'll just edit the results page configuration. And in our query pro processor options, we have this summary field here, and it just needs to know the metadata field. So just add category. I've already got the tag added in there. And save that. Publish that. And now I'll refresh. And cool, we have our different icons here. Um, that works. I also had already configured our tags to show up, the ones that we had just um, configured in our metadata mappings. So that's all done there. Um, the last bit that I need to work on is creating that curated promotion right above the search results. So yep. I'll jump on and do that right now and show you how quick it is to just create a promotion with Funnelback. So I'm in the marketing dashboard right now. Um, and what we're gonna do is use our curator tool to configure a new rule. And we'll add a new rule. And I'm just going to title it uh, Promote registration so that um, when our team comes in here, they know what this rule is about. Um, we've got some trigger groups here. So what I'll do is just set this so that whenever a search is made within a date range, any date range, just make sure we're covering, um, you know, anytime you can um, come to the search and make sure that regardless of your search query, you will see this promotion. And I'll do it right up to the day of summit. And what I'll do next is you can add an action for, for the rules and we've got quite a few different actions that we can do here. But what I'm going to do is just display a simple message um, using some of the HTML from our uh, Summit site landing page. So I like the hero image that, um, that we were going to set up. So I'm just going to grab that HTML that I copied previously, get that going. And it just displays the, the image. So here's a little quick preview of what we got. You can't see everything, but it just kind of says come to Squiz, Squiz Summit, um, the date, and the register now button. But we'll look at how that looks with our styling on our search page. So add and publish. Promote registration. Perfect. All right. So if this all works, I should refresh. And there it is. Cool. So that's our registration uh, link to Summit right here. And I'll just make sure this is applying to any of our searches. So I'll try a new search. Um, there it is, just keeps appearing. 
now we can make sure everyone that searches can see that registration for summit is right here and they should get on there as soon as they can and that's it for the search component what are your thoughts i you think it looks pretty good for now yeah it looks pretty nifty I like the, um, the advertising advertising banner at the top that's always good for the marketing people um Absolutely. i guess a lot more value out of all of the searches coming through everybody's site. um that's cool yeah. Awesome. Um, anybody else? Ricky, you, you got anything? How are you going with your flows? Hey, good. Um, so I'll just share my screen. So I'm just helping out um, James at the moment. Oh, okay. Uh, creating the uh, REST API component of the, um, of the data store. Uh, section so I exit out of this so we've got our flow here still and we've just added a rest API as the next step after it creates an object in Salesforce um, and in the rest API we're configuring our form fields so we're submitting to the um, uh, to the data store events collection yeah, right. uh, and we're mapping the uh, stuff from the webhook so from the form to the uh, fields that data store can consume to uh, update that nifty little uh, pie chart. Um, so it's very similar to what we were doing before with the Salesforce form. So I've set up our uh, REST API component here. We've uh, set the headers to application JSON and in the body, we're mapping the fields now. So if we go to name, that, there we go. Oops. And description. That's there. Oh. And then industry. And then I'll pass this on to um, James when he's ready uh, to get it all sorted for the end. That's me. Okay. All right, James, I'm assuming you're still working. So we can have, have see Tim, we haven't seen you in a while. What are you up to? Oh, yeah, just working on some content. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'll show my screen. This is this is like end product. All the pretty stuff happens. Exactly. All right. Um, cool. So the current page, we're essentially pretty much got all of our content in the page. Just putting the finishing touches uh, on our content right now. Uh, and you know, one really cool feature we have in Squeeze Matrix is the class selector. So you notice here that. Um, what our class selector allows, you know, content editors to do is to choose from any like pre-select classes uh, that are available in the design template and use them at will. Um, so it's sort of like, you know, control, um, but within safeguard rails. So what I'm doing here is just, you know, putting some finishing touches to some of the content. You notice that up top, we've got these nice little orange bullets just, that just highlight the agenda timeframes. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and use my style selector. Uh, from here, I can choose the orange bullet point style and go ahead and apply styles. Again, you know, real-time visual feedback, you know, we can see that the styles, you know, take place and, you know, the content there is uh, good to go. Um, well, yeah, so that was just me, you know, selecting a simple style and getting that style applied to the content. Let's go further down here. We're going to do the same thing with our, our little call to action. Uh, so, you know, we, we're trying to essentially push users to reach out to someone at squiz.net if they're interested in presenting, right? Um, so one thing we can do here, we can bump up the size of this text here, we can actually choose a lead text styling. And that's actually going to, as you can see, it's just bumped up the size of the text, make that a little bit more prominent. And same we can do with our call to action button as well. You know, right now it's just a plain looking link. Uh, but again, you know, we've got the ability to choose and add additional styles here. So let's go ahead, we can choose our lead text. And we can also go with a primary button color as well. So this is actually going to turn that link into a nice big you know, call to action button. Nice big prominent text there. 
I go ahead and save this and we can preview our changes. Yeah, and so as a result, you know, content editors can be given a whole bunch more control and access to the design assets um, behind the scenes, uh, since they can, you know, choose from like a whole bunch of different styles that have been uh, built inside the system. So here we've got, you know, a nice little orange bullet icon select here. And as we scroll down to our call to action, you know, we've got nice big prominent text and a nice big call to action button there. Cool. And, you know, if you've got some talented our marketers out there that know a little bit of CSS, you know, there's nothing stopping them from, you know, also putting in some styles of their own if they want. Uh, so yeah, again, very, very flexible content here in Swiss Matrix. Cool. cool. I'm just waiting for the uh, form to come in now so we can test out the, uh, the Swiss Connect flow. But that, that's where I'm at. Okay. All right, nice. So we've got the, the form. That was Ricky's form we're going to paste in there, aren't we? So is that... That's the plan. Yeah, cool. So is that, is that built, uh, Ricky, or we have any of that form component ready to paste in yet? Yep, should be ready to paste in. Um, shoot us yep. in, would be great. Yeah, sure thing, I'll send that to you now. Yeah, we're getting, getting down to crunch time, guys. <laughs> so, our 60 minutes. Um, how are you coming along, James? Don't, no pressure, man. No pressure. <laughs> yeah, not sweating at all. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think we're good. Um, so I can share. Uh, here we go. So let's do that. Uh, let's do that one. Share this one. So yeah, Ricky sent over the um, form ID from here. So all I've done is I go to form contents. I've just added in this additional select field here. Uh, and then, as I was saying, I've just mapped it to the values, uh, some of the values of the industry field in Salesforce. Um, if we have a quick look at that field, uh, form rather, um, coming through here, and we see this extra industry field. So, in theory, what I should be able to do is fill this out. And let's make this go from communications and then submit. So form is still submitting through here. Um, what I've also done is that I've created a um, reference site on the uh, for the database as well. Uh, so if I go in through and have a look at uh, content, um, I've had to do a fairly big uh, data store dump in here for JS. Just excuse this, it's time and uh, value for the time being. Um, of course, through best practice, you can hook this in through uh, our uh, Gitbridge tool. So no JS dump here, but everything coming through uh, CDN and uh, Gitbridge this way. Um, replicating the HTML out on the page. So I've got canvas uh, of uh, the idea of my chart. Uh, I'm just pulling through jQuery, so the dollar sign works underneath here, and then really replicating, um, you know, what we had in the main JS file earlier. Um, so I'm pulling through the charts JS file here. I'm setting up what was in settings earlier, so my production. Uh, this is the URL I passed on to Ricky for the connect flow, um, and then initializing and getting everything exactly as we had it before. So with quick preview on this. we can see that now we're getting data coming through here. So proving that, uh, you know, data store is super quick to set up, uh, use the reference guys, use the tutorials. Um, we can connect it through with uh, Squiz Connect and Matrix and get everything going this way here. So I guess the last piece for us is to link this through to um, uh, the homepage that uh, Tim has been building. Cool. Yeah, that that um, lead was created Thing, was it have we got in Salesforce? Did that go through? Uh, let's have a quick look. So, if I was come up into here, and we can see if you can still see my screen, yeah, cool. uh, the Derek May is coming through to Salesforce, but also passing through to uh, Data Store 
yeah. then representing that in the data viz. So yeah, all three things working nicely together. So yeah, we're pushing pushing data through all the different places. Yeah, which is great. Which is great. I love it when a plan comes together. All right. So um, Ricky, you've uh, Jones has done his bit. You've got your farm. We're handing that over to Tim. Did you you're pasting that in for us, are you? Yeah, all is ready. All is ready. People want to see that. Yeah, so Ricky was kind enough to pass through that asset ID for me. So here in our nested content, we've you know, nested in the form contents. Uh, and here is the form on the page. Uh, there we go. Nice. Cool. Whatever information we submit here, uh, it's going to flow through to Squiz Connect, and Squiz Connect is going to send it to all sorts of places. Um, yeah. Yeah. It is ready to go. And I guess, I mean, that, that form can stay stay where it is doing its thing and we can still put behind the scenes with Connect, um, push that information out to um, new sources, um, spreadsheets or anything else that we want to without having to touch that front end, which is cool. Um, yeah. All right, so that's that's the, the front page done. Um, we've got data flowing through Connect, yeah. matrix through Connect. It's it's arriving in data store. I think we've got one last content change. Uh, it's, it's worth while showing this really cool page structure page here. Okay. Um, like you know, maneuvering content around once you've got a reasonably long page like this can be you know, kind of painful. Thankfully, we've got this really nice drag and drop UI, uh, and it could be something as simple as hey, you know, our featured speakers. Maybe we actually want to bump them uh, so they're actually below the agenda. So really, I can drag and drop content you know wherever I want to. Uh, and then I can save that, and that will actually adjust you know, the full page structure of the page. Um, so any last minute, hey, let's reorder this page like this, super easy uh, using Squiz Matrix. Yeah, nice. And that, those content blocks can be, yeah, updated and reused kind of discreetly, I guess. Yep, absolutely. Well, yeah, but I just wanted to show that. Uh, back to you. All right, cool. So that's um, James is done uh, james were you you were going to nest in were you going to nest in that uh, the donut chart next or is that sorry uh sorry. no uh, yeah that's my bad i've uh, sent it over to tim because actually what i forgot to show you was actually in connect um so i'm just going to quickly share again okay. um just to show you how quick how easy this is to actually update yeah uh, so if i do this and share um, so Ricky uh, created the uh, Connect flow for Salesforce Create Update. Yep. Um, so he has his uh, Salesforce uh, Create Object trigger here. Um, mm -hmm. And at the end of that, he's just created another uh, REST API trigger. So if I open that up, um, it is this really simple, low code uh, uh, implementation. Um, so the URL um, that I passed to him here was for events. And this is the data store URL. Yep. Um, if we look at the headers, all we're literally setting in the headers is it's going to be uh, application JSON type. Um, and then in the body, uh, using the same uh, kind of a jQuery body in here, uh, and we're just setting a first name. And then actually the uh, pertinent bit for our uh, mini application is just grabbing industry, passes it all through. Um, and then so if there's any uh, errors in here as well, back in uh, flows or uh, dashboard, we'd see any errors being caught in here. But you know, five minutes ago in the demo and the submission that I created, no errors through, and we saw it going through to Salesforce and Data Store and the visualization. Love yeah. graphs. And I can show that uh, on the screen now, actually. Let me just, you guys want me to show this? Yeah, to show that. Right. So we have the data visualization uh, that's loaded up. I've uh, just quickly nested it on the page. Uh, we note that it is all the way down the bottom there. So, but here's here's the awesome uh, data set visualization that we've got built here. Uh, so I'm just going to drag that up to the top. Uh, so we can go ahead and drag our data visualization all the way up to the top. And we're going to actually replace that nested chart there. So we don't need that chart any longer. Uh, so I'll save that. And we can go ahead uh, and remove that, the previous RSVP chart that we had on the page now. And replace it with this awesome data store visualization. Yeah. 
Yeah. Trash my RSVP chat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I will, uh, you know, obviously with time, it would be nice to put this into columns as well and make it a bit more in keeping with the actual, with uh, Tim's beautiful styling on his page. Mm. Um, you know, I'm just so excited about the data viz. I've made it as big as possible. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. well, Give no. me 20 minutes and it'll be a bit smaller. <laughs> yeah. And you've got a lot of people who like agriculture. <laughs> so, yeah. I know. And again, you know, that's my farmer's mentality living in the countryside. So that's my test data. Go, go, go. Agriculture. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. So that means we have um, taken our, our bare bones Gilmore template and built that all the way out with the integrations and our final page. Um, so look, with a, a, a couple minutes to spare, um, I think we've done pretty well. Um, so I think guys we're we're completely we're completely done for the moment. Um, <laughs> apart from a bit of marketing tidy up and and maybe a bit of CSS, um, but uh, otherwise all complete. Um, the bulk of the integration's done and um, some really complex uh, data transfers, uh, flows, um, indexing and search um, all put together. Uh, in a single page, um, ready for registrations, um, in uh, less than 60 minutes. Good job. Um, yeah, so, good job, guys. Uh, yeah. Yeah, everybody. everybody come on. <laughs> Everyone's patting, patting backs. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Um, so thanks, guys, for doing all your hard work. Um, and uh, if uh, anyone has further follow-ups, uh, you know where to find us. Um, thanks very much. <laughs>